So as we begin today, uh, make sure you guys have a call in the back. If you're out in the lobby, you guys can want to come in here and have church with us. It's going to be fun. So come in here. We're going to pray and we're going to start the day off. And I just encourage you today that uh, it's a day of celebration, a day of excitement, and help us to that end. All right? Can you do that? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today, Lord. Thank you that you have, you have given us this amazing gift of a relationship with you, Lord. So, Lord, as we, as we begin to worship you today, Lord, as we begin to go into your presence, as we begin to respond to what you're doing, Holy Spirit, I ask that you be so present here. Lord, that people would be experiencing you. Father, that we would have hearts that are, are ready to listen to you and to move into your presence, God. Holy Spirit, are there things that hold us back from you today? Would you cleanse us? Would you forgive us? We love you, God.
you haven't given up on the building, God. And Lord, you're asking for us to step out with you into new territory, Lord. So God, would you continue to do that? If we step into what you're doing, God, would we not run? But we know that you're wonderful, powerful, great, and mighty, and worthy of
to give to you in our uh, finances now, in this offering. We want to give to you in our time. We want to give to you in our talent. We want to give to you out of our whole being so that you would be pleased and honored and glorified, Lord God. Uh, we just pray, Lord, for uh, for our rural homes and hospitals this morning, Lord God. We just pray for you to be uh, bringing healing to them. We pray for continued healing for uh, Tony's life, Lord God, for other people, Lord, who are uh, experiencing a particular situation. We just pray for your grace to all of that, Lord God. And so, Lord, we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. The offering is good to go. Psalm 34. Look at all the lyrics. You can look at your Bible and find them. I saw the.
this way for me.
So I depend very heavily on some of those people. So uh, Paris Rossiter is in his room somewhere. I don't know where he is. He's over there. Wonderful. If um, if you have a, uh, a feeling that you want to get involved, if you're a partner at Intervention Point, you want to get involved in those areas, connect with Paris. Paris, we appreciate you guys here at the booth. We appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. On the band side of this, yes, thank you. Every time you get into the from the stream, thank you for All right. On the band side of things, uh, I put a lot of leadership here, but I work really strongly with Leah over here on PADS today. And, uh, so if you are feeling like you want to get involved with it, please connect with these people here. And also you can connect with me directly if you want to be getting involved in things with our grounds and our building and other ways that we can be serving the Lord. Um, it takes a lot to run this place. It takes a lot of you. So uh, feel encouraged and needed. Good morning. Uh, I just want to introduce the leaders of what we call Connection hospitality leaders, because that's where the focus is in hospitality. And that takes up our ushers, our information center, and our greeters. Uh, can we give a hand clap for the parking lot? <laughs>
of the month. So please, if you're interested in mentoring, send me. Um, we have some great leaders like Kobe um, mentoring with Lena Walton. Lena, I believe our slide is Okay. And um, the real teams is Barbara Conlon and uh, Jessica Lynch. So amen. We have a great team and we like to invite you more. So uh, come be a part of what real team is doing. Seventh and eighth graders and ninth graders and tenth graders and eleventh graders and twelfth graders are a lot of fun. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. So we uh, just just want to highlight that here uh, the contact the staff is here in your uh, in your mini this week so that you can be connecting in 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 that way. So uh, I, I I just want to express my gratitude for all of you that are involved in ministry in many different ways. And this morning we also now just want to uh, connect in to those of you who are here in some of the newest capacities and and uh, and uh, welcome you into partnership. So those that I've been meeting with uh, that are the uh, uh, graduates of Entry Point and are ready to come in as partners this morning, will you please come forward now as well? Thank <laughs> you. 
Are you ready to partner with this ministry of CCF? By partner, we mean, do you commit to participate in this vision to love God, love people, and live as disciples? And are you willing to give and receive counsel from your brothers and sisters with a heart of unconditional love, recognizing that this is part of our walk of discipleship and how we hear the voice of God? Will you give priority to faithful participation in Sunday morning gatherings and in serving in ministry in a heart of love? Will you pray for CCF as part of the body of Christ? Will you open your life to further equipping and serving and ministering to others? Will you give up your time, talents, and treasure to the ministry and mission of this church and to those in need? Will you share your faith in words, service, and lifestyle at home, in the CCF body, and in the realms of work and society and wherever God takes you? And so CCF, to you partners, are you willing to welcome these persons before you as your brothers and sisters and part of who we are at CCF? And will you commit to include them in your prayers for our body? If you can, will you just stand and extend out your arms and pray to them? And so, Lord God, we commit these people to you. We say thank you, Lord, for bringing them here, Lord God. Thank you for including them into who we are as this part of, of the body. And so, Lord God, we dedicate them to you today and ask again for the equipping power of your Holy Spirit to be ministering into them, to be ministering through them, to be bringing encouragement, to be bringing a release of your gifts, Lord God. Lord God, I'm just so blessed this morning by the available hearts, by the many people that said, I'm ready to serve in the places where I need it. And Lord God, we do that. We come into this body so that you are the one that's glorified, so that you are the one that's honored and lifted up. And so Lord God, today for all of us, we just recommit ourselves to you and say, Lord, we look forward to the clarification of the next step of this calling and purpose that you have us on. We join you in this way of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go back. Just take a minute to say uh, the freedom and welcome men in the end of this body.
that again. For my father's house is a holy place, uh -huh. not a robber's den. Inventing 
uh, the, the, uh, the first airplane, this uh, heavier than air machine that took off and uh, flew uh, carrying carry a person. It was the most amazing thing. The first flight was like 300 feet. The next one was about the same distance. The fourth one was really long. It was 852 feet and it took 59 seconds. Figure it out, that's not a real fast run. But here it is. Uh, it, it, it was an event that changed the world, right? And so uh, we're there discussing and uh, walking this path, and we're talking about it as a family that has lived in Hong Kong, that lives here, that uh, goes back and forth, that travels other places, that, that, that uh, this invention of the airplane was a very important invention for our lives. Uh, before that, if you wanted to go someplace on another country or, or another continent, you hopped on the ship and you spent weeks in the process of getting there. Uh, there wouldn't be any sort of short-term mission trip to Arusha, Tanzania that, that we're uh, planning to, to uh, send a team of people that are hopping on an airplane and going there, spending about eight days there and coming back. Uh, you would not be at your destination yet were it not for this invention of, of uh, the airplane. So we walked into the visitor center and here was this uh, bulletin board with this picture of the first flight with this question, how will you impact the world? Amen. That's a great question. Amen. That's a great question for us this morning about as we talk about how we enter in to walking this way with Jesus. We uh, introduce staff to you, we introduce these new partners to you, the people who are saying, in this way, we're going to be entering in and making an impact together with others that are going to alter the eternal destiny of this world. Now, airplanes have brought a lot of good in this world. They're also capable of bringing a lot of destruction in, into the world as well depending on the hearts and hands of the people that are controlling it, right? And so, and so uh, there, there, there was great impact out of this invention of the airplane. And so there is great impact that comes in the decisions that you make in your life and how you align yourself and what you choose to do with the uh, abilities and talents and gifts and relationships and, and uh, whatever that scenario of uh, the possibilities that God has brought into your life. In, 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 uh, it, took, it, it took 25 years then from the time of this first flight until the Spirit of St. Louis, piloted by Charles Lindbergh, was the first uh, American to Europe flight that was recorded. Uh, it took him like 30 hours to make that trip just across the ocean. And, and, and so on one hand it's like, wow, 25 years. But when you're living in that time, you don't realize there was no way when Orville and, and uh, Wilbur Wright were, uh, were uh, doing this astounding distance of a heavier than air machine for 852 feet that they that could project out and say, and then in 25 years, there's going to be this guy named uh, Charles Lindbergh, who would have been about two years old at that point, I think, um, um, who, who was going to get in an airplane and be able to, to uh, fly it across the, the uh, Atlantic, and then a generation later, that we'd be in jets that would be going all around the world. So when we step in and take those steps of impact, little do we know what the critical impact will be that that causes, right? Yeah. And so we want to be doing it in ways that is honor and glorifying to God. And so on this Passion Week, we're going to be looking at it as we meet together this morning, and then in our Good Friday time, and then in Easter Sunday morning, we want to be looking deeply into this verse that, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so this morning we focus on Jesus as the way, as he rode this way on the donkey into Jerusalem. Yeah. On Friday night, we'll talk about Jesus the truth, and Pilate's famous question to him, what is truth? As that uh, 
story unfolds, it seems like many pilots are the ones that see the more on trial than what Jesus is, right, in terms of who's really guiding and leading that kind of event. And then next week, since we know the story, Easter Sunday, about Jesus being the light, because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. But let's not get ahead of yourself. But let's read into this passage here in John 14, where Jesus is laying out this statement that he's the way, the truth, and the life. John 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't. No, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know me and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Here's this phrase in verse 6. That Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Greek construction is like a layer cake. I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the life. So I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way that that uh, that uh, leads to the Father. This revelation of who God the Father is. I am the truth. And I am the life. And it builds together. And it fits there together. It's this three in one identity of who Jesus is. And if you get this phrase in the way he said it, I am. Of course, way back in Exodus, right? When uh, Moses is standing before God, and there's this burning bush in front of him. And this bush is, is, uh, has a flame shooting out of it, but it's not being consumed. It's not burning up. Instead, there's this voice coming out of it, and Moses is standing there talking to this voice in the bush. All right, I just kind of digest that a little bit, right? But he's aware that this isn't just hallucinations where this is a very real entity. This is God speaking to him from his bush. And he says to this God in this bush, God, what is your name? And God says, I am. I am. And so here, thousands of years later, is this echo of Jesus picking up on the same theme and making the same proclamation, I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And that's those verses that go through there, that I am the one who leads you to the Father. So Philip says, uh, so you're going to show us your Father? I can't even remember being introduced to your Father. And Jesus says, every time you look at me, you see the Father. Jesus is the same image of his dad, right? Because they are both God. Yeah. So it's the claim of Jesus to say that he is God. Uh -huh. That he's not just a representative of God. He's not just a consultant for God. He's not just an ambassador sent from God. But that he is saying the very person that I am here in physical human form is the divine one, is God, is this eternal one, is the same one that ancestor Moses talked to on that burning bush, which would have been a very famous story in this uh, path that, or, or, or in the generation that, that Jesus was talking to. So here Jesus comes 
What about riding on this donkey, a donkey incredibly enough that had never been ridden before, uh, known to be stubborn beasts, and here that is beautifully trotting along, uh, bringing Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. And uh, expectations were running high, right? Jesus' popularity is at an all-time high. They're waving these palm branches and they're shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yes. Hosanna is not just a term of adoration. Hosanna is a, is a, uh, it's, it's a request, it's a supplication saying, save us, save us. So in this is, is this expectation that Jesus is going to do something dramatic. Jesus is going to, of course, in their uh, way of thinking, they have a very specific idea of what that dramatic thing is going to be. Yeah. They think that Jesus is going to go in there, and I mean, yeah, he starts with the money change, but he's going to end up with the title of the room, upsetting his table, upsetting his destiny, and Jesus will be the king. Did you, ever, did you ever find out that in this life of walking with Jesus, that what he's got in mind is sometimes different than what you've got in mind? <laughs> That sometimes when you're there suggesting to Jesus how he should work it out, and he just sort of wraps his arm around you and says, Well, you stop interfering in my business, please do. That, that, uh, that uh, as we bring ourselves to him, that, that we ask for certain things, but the truth is, in the word of God, that what God thinks of, that what the revelation of Jesus is, is more than what we can ask for or imagine. Jesus has this integrative influence into our lives, where he takes things that seem to be of random nature, or that, he, that takes things where it even seems that it set us back. And he said, when you align yourself with me on my way, that I will bring these things, and I will bring redemption into all of that. I will take those things that Satan meant for evil, and I will turn them about and bring good out of that. Talking with you, and so the gospel just falls, right? 
It doesn't, this also doesn't just show up. The gospel don't just start with Jesus saying, God, I'm just going to hang this cross for y'all. But he's lived among them. I mean, he's kind of like a Christmas time, right? We talk about that Jesus is a baby, and he grows up, and he lives this life, and he has parents, and he has to figure out, and death goes through adolescence with him. And, and, uh, and parents that have to figure out how to go through the adolescence with him as well. It's a Jesus. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and so here's, here's Jesus walking and living this life. And so in the beginning parts of the gospel, in the first two thirds of the gospel, Jesus sometimes talking to crowds, but a lot of the gospel is Jesus talking to the individual. He's meeting with people, and he's saying, hi, what's your name? How are you doing today? And he's ministering into that. And he's coming up to people, and he's saying, what would you like me to do for you? And they're giving a specific request because Jesus is involved in his ministry in their lives. And so this is Jesus coming among us in our, in our way. Now, some people make that initial step, and they say, yes, I remember taking that step that I will be a follower of Jesus. And then it's sort of like, but, but what's next? So you sort of reach back and keep doing things the way you did before. And, and, uh, and after a while, you realize that, that, that other things have entered in, and your life isn't filled with a lot of purpose and direction. And so the way that you're on is a wondering way. We could go to that slide. Where you are just sort of wondering here and there. Where you're looking for meaning here. Where you're looking for meaning there. Where you're looking at, at the, you know, so this is the crowd, right? This is the crowd where, where, uh, where uh, uh, here, 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 here they are lining the streets. And, and uh, Jesus is coming down through and they're saying, let's, let's take the king. Right? Why, why, why did the crowd on this Palm Sunday want Jesus to, to be king? Well, Jesus had a free feeding program, apparently. Right? <laughs> he did, I mean, talk about free medical care. One user system. You know? I, I mean, so, so, so there were all these benefits that could be applied to everybody if Jesus would become the king. But the same crowd that is there cheering Jesus and saying, you be the king, by, Friday, by Thursday is jeering Jesus and saying, crucify him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Because they're looking for their own benefit. They still got themselves at the center of this. And they're saying, how can I use this Jesus in my orbit rather than how I can get on his way? Jesus, will you step out of the way that you're going and come and minister to me? Can I use you as a benefit system rather than them stepping onto this way and joining the way that Jesus is going? Because Jesus is the way. Yeah. But sometimes people are asking, but who is this Jesus? And so it's not a wondering way, but it's a wondering way. Okay, we go to the one with the O there, okay? The wondering way. We wonder, who is this Jesus? We look for, I mean, there's other stories of people who died and resurrected. That's not unique and only to Jesus. I mean, Jesus did it himself, right? He, he raised Lazarus from the dead. There were other people that he brought back to death. So that the person dies and comes back to death. Uh, comes back to life is not in itself sufficient evidence that he is the Son of God. Now the difference is that Lazarus died again when Jesus did not die. When Jesus came uh, into a new body, one that could uh, pass through walls but yet have the floor hold him up, one that could eat but yet disappear and show up and that then ascended into the Father and remains there, flesh and blood in heaven, seated beside his Father, interceding for us, saying, I live that life, I walk that walk. Uh, Father, uh, let's have mercy on them and minister into their lives in this way. So, so all through the Gospels, people are wondering, who is this Jesus? And so, 
you know, and so one day Jesus asks and says, who do people say that I am? Some say, well, he's this prophet, or he's that prophet, he's Jeremiah, or he's Elijah, or he's this or that, and then Jesus brings it home. It's a question that all of us need to face. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Do you agree with this claim of Jesus that he is the I am? That he is God himself, come down to share your life, living in human flesh. Next question is, is Jesus a way, or is he the way? Is Jesus a way for me, or is he the way for we? A way for me, or the way for we. You see the difference in that question. Where it's like, so it's not you can say, well, Jesus, by confessing our sins and finding forgiveness, that's the way it happens. And yeah, well, that's good. That's really good for you. Yeah. Me, I find my way to God through this way or that way, by this religion or by that spiritual exercise, or by doing this or doing that. But, but this revelation of who Jesus is says to you know, some of you know the verse in John 3, 16, where God so loved the world that he sends his only begotten son. Sends his one and only son. This one son, this only son, who says that he is the door, that he is the way to the Father. And so there's only one son, there's one way to the Father. Yes. 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 Now, that, 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 Friday night, truth is truth, okay? And, and, and so there's the fingerprints and revelation of God that, that is present in different thought systems in a different way. And so, but, but does, does a Hindu thought lead to heaven? But from, no, it does not. But from Hindu thought, you can move people to Jesus. Okay? Jesus is the way. This is the unique thing of Jesus. Wherever you are at is where I will start. I will meet you where you are at, and I will bring you to this doorway that enters in. But the declaration from Jesus is that no one comes to the Father except through me. That Jesus is the way that is the access into this relationship with God. In Matthew 7, Jesus is preaching, and he says in verse 13, that if you enter God's kingdom only through a narrow gate, the highway to hell is broad. Its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult. Only a few ever find it. So the roads lead to Jesus, and Jesus is the way to access into heaven and into eternity. Yeah. Finally, Jesus' way is a wonderful way. Yeah. For people who are convinced of this fact, where we enter into a relationship with Jesus. And this is, this is the, um, you know, sometimes you're driving along and your kids say to you, how much longer until we get there? Right? Are we there yet? And what's the answer? Almost 20 more minutes or five hours. It's like you want an answer, I'll give you an answer. Oh, you want a true answer? That's a lot harder, you know. One time I'm driving in the Philippines and we're, you know, how long does it take? Five hours. And we drive and drive and drive and drive and lots of traffic. And so, well, how long is our destination? Five hours. I decided and said, it's always five hours. I mean, you just have to drive away before you start to track. <laughs> like, so, 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 so we're on this way with Jesus. It's this way that, uh, that is about being with him on the journey. That is about uh, not just saying, here's the destination. But that, but that here is Jesus, and I get to be with him. 
that if you get it to be with him on this road, on this way. Luke 24, this is jumping to after Jesus' resurrection. But there's another road story of Jesus where uh, uh, Jesus is, uh, is uh, incognito talking to two of his followers. There's two people walking along. They're going from Jerusalem to, to uh, Emmaus, which is like, it's like seven miles or something like that. Okay? And, 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 and so they're trudging home to, to uh, Emmaus, and this traveler shows up among them, and he begins to talk to them. And, and this traveler is Jesus. It goes like this. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went home with them, and they sat down to eat. He took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Then they said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us? as he talked with us and explained the scriptures to us. You catch that moment? Here these people are experiencing Jesus, interacting with him on this journey. And something is happening that's a vital purpose. At the moment, it's kind of like this first flight. It's hard to get hold of what the significance of this will be. But as they continue walking this journey with Jesus, the revelation comes, and they begin to see what this happens. And, 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 and the story is quite dramatic in that. Here it's nearing the evening. They're tired from this journey. So then after meeting Jesus, they're filled with this energy, and they were running back to Jerusalem just, just to tell the disciples that, that Jesus is alive, that he's risen, that he can walk with us, that he eats with us, that he ministers to us, that he's there in, in, in our lives, and that he's calling us to walk his way with him. That's Jesus on the way. Calling you to join him on this way. Entering into it through this wonderful gift of salvation. Continuing on in it through this practice of connecting with him day by day. Experiencing the scriptures with him. Listening to his voice. Listening to his voice as you are alone in prayer with him. Listening to his voice as you come into the body and hear what he's doing in testimony in other people's lives. Listening to his voice as you join in some radical cohorts that will be starting up again in two weeks. And, and, uh, and the joining in to be learning, to be instructing our spirits in the how to be walking this way with Jesus at a greater and greater level. Jesus. Is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way to have life not only in eternity, but life that begins now as we focus on walking this way with Jesus. With Jesus. Let's stand and worship and, and, uh, and celebrate that it's Jesus is among us. Let's rise and worship and be proclaimed to Him that our commitment is that we will walk His way, that we're not going to be uh, sidetracked looking for Him to, to be wondering with us, but that we're going to be stepping on to this highway of content, that we're there saying, uh, proclaiming that He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Like the man who came to Jesus, when Jesus said, Do you believe? And He said, I do believe. Can you help me with what I'm doubting? Can you help me believe in what I'm not believing? And Jesus took that man and said, yes, that is the kind of relationship that I have. One that walks in honesty, one that walks in fulfillment, and one that joins me on this way. We have people in the front of our heart this course prepared to be praying with you this morning. So step out of your seat, make that choice, and just be established yet. Settling this next step of this way of walking with Jesus this morning. Let's push it together.
know it as well. And as we have our week this week, we know it as well because it's more well done. So Lord, I just pray as we go out from this place, we go out as a mighty force that impacts this community, as a mighty force that impacts our work and our places that we are in every single day, representing you well, King Jesus, and Lord of all. So God bless us and keep us. Until we come back together as a family, we love you.